Hello and welcome to Salzburg. In today's video, I want to introduce you to the 15 must-see sites in Salzburg. 15 sites you should not miss while you're visiting Salzburg. Most of these sites are part of the free walking tours that are not happening now and we're in lockdown so we cannot actually go and see the sites. What we will do is I will show you images I took over the years. You can visit those sites in the order I present them to you. Also when we go on the free walking tours, if you join a tour in the future, that's more or less the order we visit the sites. There are some things like the fortress we are not visiting on the tour, but you should do that on your own. I will tell you where you can get a printed city map. You can visit the free walking tour website. I wrote an article about those sites there. And if you get the printed map or you check the Google map in the description below, there is the article and the Google map. Let's have a look at those sites. 15 must see sites in Salzburg. I will tell you a little bit about them. And after this video, I will also tell you one secret. I will give you one tip on how you can get into the fortress for free if you don't want to pay. Here we go. Our first site is the Mozart residence. Mozart's residence is the place where Mozart moved to when he was 17 years old. He was born in Getreidegasse on the other side of the river and the birthplace is more famous and more important. It's besides the fortress, the most, the most famous site in Salzburg. The residents and the birthplace nowadays, they are museums and I would only recommend to visit them if you're a real fan of Mozart or if you get a Salzburg card because in the Salzburg card they're included. I will not tell you more about the Salzburg card here but there will be an article linked below. On the other side of the street from Mozart's birthplace there is Mirabel Garden and Mirabel Garden is famous for many reasons. Mirabel was a countryside residence, the castle for one of the archbishops around 1600 and the steps that you see here on the picture those are the famous Dore Me steps from The Sound of Music where the kids and Maria they jump up and down while singing the Dore Me and the garden, there is a dwarf garden, there is a, there is the marble hall in the castle, you should visit the marble hall. You can go into the castle and up to the marble hall. Marble hall is famous for weddings and you should just take your time, walk through the garden. In summer it can be very full, not this year because we're in lockdown. But yeah, Mirabel is a must-see site and Mirabel would probably be the place where when you're coming from the train station for example and you just walk through the city for three or four hours to see those 15 sites, you would start at Mirabel. Mirabel is walking like 10 minutes from the train station and yeah, the perfect place to start exploring the city. And then that's Mozart's birthplace. Mozart's birthplace, you have to cross the river on the right side of the river where I am now also and where the residents and Mirabel is, there are not that many famous sites. And the reason for that is that the archbishop was living on the other side. That's why most of the, most of the important buildings were built on the other side. Now Mozart's birthplace is in Getreidegasse in the most famous shopping street. Mozart's birthplace would be the most famous site in Salzburg besides the fortress. Yeah, and same as the residence. It's just a building. You can take a picture like everyone does. Um, and the museum is interesting if you're a real fan of Mozart or if you have a Salzburg card because the Salzburg card includes all the museums. And then just walk through Getreidegasse. Like you will want to go to Mozart's birthplace anyway because you want to see Getreidegasse. That's where all the old signs are in front of the shops and the very scenic streets. That's also worth going very early in the morning because otherwise it's very crowded. Next one is the University Church and the University Church is just behind Mozart's birthplace. It's not a very popular site. It's um, one of four churches built by an Austrian architect, Fischer von Erlach, and maybe you know about Schönbrunn Castle in Vienna. That's the same architect, Fischer von Erlach. And yeah, not many people visit the church, but inside, inside there are no paintings on the walls, and there is no mass usually, only sometimes um, there are no church benches. So it's very, it's very impressive construction, and usually it's empty. Usually there are only a few people there. So that's one must see site not popular but one of my favorites and then just behind the university church there is the concert hall and that's like the cultural hotspot 
of Salzburg. That's where the Salzburg Festival happens, and the Salzburg Festival is the biggest classical music festival in the world. There are 250,000 visitors coming to Salzburg every year for opera and classical music. And there is not much happening in the festival district. The festival takes place for six weeks in summer. And while there is no festival, there are no people. And also during the festival, there are people only before and after the concerts. But it's a very nice, very nice atmosphere around there. And everything is very close together, like all the sites are next to each other. So you will not want to miss any of those must-see sites. Then, um, just one more corner and there is St. Peter's Monastery. And St. Peter's, that's the place where Salzburg was founded in 696, was founded by St. Rupert. St. Rupert is portrayed as a bishop with a salt barrel. And you can, you can if you, if you pay attention in the churches, you will find St. Rupert everywhere, bishop with a salt barrel. And then in St. Peter's, you, there are two yards that you can visit. You cannot go into the monastery, but then you have to go into the church. The church was renovated in 2019, and it's um, yeah, a very impressive um, church. And then you will also want to visit the cemetery of St. Peter's. That's one of the oldest cemeteries in Europe, and that's where Another scene of The Sound of Music was supposed to be filmed, but they were not allowed to film at the cemetery. Maybe you remember at the end when, um, when they were escaping, when they were hiding behind the graves. That's supposed to be the cemetery of St. Peter's. The entrance is just next to the entrance to the church. So go through the cemetery or into the cemetery. And then the next one, the Franciscan church, that's one of my favorite churches. There are four favorite churches of mine. And the Franciscan church, it combines many different styles of, of art. You can see the tower, it's Gothic style or Neo-Gothic. Um, and why Franciscans? In Salzburg, there are still seven active monasteries. And inside the buildings of St. Peter's, there are also Franciscans living. They were brought to Salzburg around 1600 for the Counter-Reformation. So also visit the Franciscan church, very different from St. Peter's church and from any other church you can visit. And then next is the uh, cathedral. And that's the most important, the most important church. I really love the cathedral. Um, it's different from the other churches is because it's more of like a a sightseeing place as well. In other churches, there are no groups allowed in the cathedral. There are a lot of tourists always. Um, yeah, and you can see the square in front of the cathedral. It's um, impressive with the statue. There is no entrance fee so far, beginning of 2020. They were thinking about introducing an entrance fee in 2020. I'm not sure if that's happening. And yeah, the cathedral is a whole other chapter. I will probably make a separate video about that soon. And then everything in Salzburg is happening around the cathedral. There are three squares and for example there is a theater happening, the Jedermann. The Jedermann happens during the Salzburg festival. There is a huge stage for like 3,000 people here in front of the cathedral. And then whenever there is like the Christmas market for example, a traditional festival in September, Rubiati Kirtek, that's happening here. There are lots of events happening around the cathedral. Actually all the events are happening on those three squares around the cathedral and you will want to go there anyway. Next one is the fortress. Fortress, we cannot really see the whole fortress on this picture, I don't know why, but the fortress is the only site in this list that you have to pay for. At the end of this video I will tell you one thing, one tip about how to get into the fortress for free if you really don't want to pay. So the fortress, it's mainly about the views. On the other side of the fortress, um, on the southern side, you can see the Alps. You cannot see the Alps in Salzburg in the city center because there are those smaller mountains. There is Mönchsberg on the other side where the, like next to the fortress, surrounding the city, so you cannot see the Alps. But once you're inside the fortress, you can see the Alps and you will see the Alps. The views are the main reason and also the best view over the city. The views are the main reason why I would go to the fortress then because the building is interesting and then there are museums as well that are interesting if you're interested in history. But the fortress is my number one recommendation if you want to, <clears throat> if you want to pay for any site. Next one is Nonberg. Okay, this picture is also cut. The 
Oh, now we can see it. Um, Nonberg, the church on top of the mountain, the one with the, the church with the red roof, that's a monastery, all those buildings around the church, the monastery where Maria from The Sound of Music was. And that's also not a popular site, surprisingly, but the thing is that you have to climb the mountain. It's not a lot of climbing and you can either visit Nonberg on the way to the fortress, you can take a detour and visit Nonberg, or there are stairs in Kaifiertl where you can walk up to the nunnery. And you cannot visit the nunnery, most of the nuns, they're not leaving the, the cloister, but you can visit the church and that's very interesting old, very old church, very dark. If you're an early riser, you could go there at 6.45 in the morning and hear their singing and their prayers. You don't see the nuns because they don't go out into public, but you can hear their singing. And then when you go back down again, you go back to the cathedral and next to the cathedral there is residence. One of those three squares that I mentioned before is residence square. There are two residences. There is the new residence, was built around 1600 as the new archbishop's residence. They're not exactly sure what he wanted to do with it. And then on the opposite side there would be the old residence. And the new residence it features a bell tower and the bells they ring three times a day. You can check the times in the article on the free walking tour website. Yeah, 35 bells and I really like the I really like the bell tower. The residence building, it's not a special, like it's just a white, a big white building, but yeah, just for historic for historic reasons. The square is called Residence Square. Next one is the old residence. The old residence is opposite of the new residence. The building itself is not that special either. But yeah for historic reasons you should know what what it is and you should know why the square is called residence square and if you think about it you will notice uh, a theme in the in the city first where Mozart's birthplace was that's where the people of the city were living and then we visited some churches and monasteries and now we got to where the archbishops were living so residence square residence of the archbishop and inside the uh, new residence and the old residence there are museums and i love both of them if you want to visit both museums then get a salzburg card and you can visit a lot more museums i link the article below i will make another video about the salzburg card and why you probably should get a salzburg card it's a really good deal next one is mozart the mozart statue mozart square is just one square further from residence square from the main square of the old town and yeah the mozart statue that's one of the iconic places in salzburg you will want to take a picture with the mozart statue they built a statue for mozart in Salzburg 50 years after his death, where they wanted to build a statue 50 years after his death, was finished for the 51st anniversary of his death because um, they, they found things from the Romans during the construction. And that's why there was a delay. After you saw the Mozart statue, you head down to the river. When you're down there, like just 50 meters from the Mozart statue, there is a bridge, Mozart Steg. Mozart Steg is from um, from around 1900, 1903 if I'm correct. And Mozart Steg was in The Sound of Music and it's just a, a place that I really like because it's special, the construction, like the style of art, it's Art Nouveau, it's similar to the Eiffel Tower. If you look at the construction of the Eiffel Tower, it looks similar with those metal things. Um, so you cross Mozart Steg, you have a nice view also from the bridge. Then you're back on the let's say less popular site of the city. There is one very nice little street. I for a while included it in my tour, but not anymore because there's not much to tell about it. So I want you to explore it on your own. You go straight from Mozart Steg, a little bit to the left and then immediately to the right again. So you're next to the mountain and there is Steingasse and Steingasse shows you why this site is, why this side of the river is less popular. This side of the river in history, it was always for the like lower class people. And in Steingasse, that's very obvious. It's more simple constructions and very narrow street. Um, Stein means stone, by the way. And you go Steingasse all the way to the end. And then you're in Linzergasse. And Linzergasse is another shopping street similar to Getreidegasse, but less fancy. Linzergasse, Linzergasse, you want to go up all the way to the end. And there is one of my favorite sites, if not the favorite site. And if it's loading now, I can show you. It's um, it's 
It's St. Sebastian Cemetery and St. Sebastian Cemetery is hidden behind the church at the end of Linzergasse. Um, not many people visit, surprisingly, because there is the grave of Mozart's father and the grave of Mozart's wife and a few other people from his family. And St. Sebastian's Cemetery is um, a Campo Santo and they say that north of the Alps, that's the only Campo Santo that's remaining still. It has those um, arcades. It's a square field with graves and you can walk around and then in the middle of the cemetery, you will find um, a mausoleum. And that's from one of the most important archbishops from history. Wolf Dietrich and yeah it's just a very special place they don't always take very good care of St. Um, Sebastian Cemetery so it's a little bit wild also and it just has very peaceful atmosphere perfect to finish your exploration of the city and I hope this video was helpful to you as I promised here is the way to get into the fortress without paying if you don't want to pay thing is that the fortress closes like five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock. It depends on the time of the year, on the season. And when the fortress closes, the building remains open for one or two more hours. There's a small door that only opens from the inside. But once you're inside the fortress, you can see the whole building. You can leave any time through that door that only opens from the inside. So you will have to walk up and the museums will be closed. But if you don't care about the museums and if you don't mind walking up, that would be the way to get the views and um, the building for, for free. And depends on the time of the year if that option is really a good one or not. Because um, in winter, when the fortress closes at 5, but it's dark at 4.30, you won't have, you, you still see the night view of the city, but it's just not the same. So yeah, that depends on the time of the year. In summer, when the fortress closes at 7, let's say, and it's, there is light until 9 o'clock, it's perfect. You can see the sunset and it's one of the best places for sunset. So here's a sunset picture from the fortress. So these are the 15 must-see sites, in my opinion, in Salzburg. There are a lot more and it depends on your personal preferences. If you have more time, just take more time to stroll around and you will find more sites on the way anyway. And most of these sites, most of these sites we visit on the free walking tour. The route of the free walking tour is the route in which I presented the sites. Um, on the map to you. We are not going to St. Sebastian's to like the end of Linzergasse. I would highly recommend that. Um, otherwise it's the same, it's the same route and it's also a route I suggest if you take the free walking tour, I suggest to revisit all the places because we for example don't go into Mirabel Garden or some um, of the churches. And there are printed city maps here in Salzburg. You can get them at the Yoho Hostel once it's open again. You can get them at the Café Alchemy, which is one of the be two best coffee places in Salzburg. And you, I will link those places in the description below as well. I think that's it. If you have any further questions, just post them in the comments below. Contact me via WhatsApp, email, whatever. I will answer you and yeah we're in lockdown that's why we do the images but once the lockdown is over we will go and visit those sites in person i'm looking forward to welcome you in salzburg again until then stay healthy stay safe stay home and stay positive bye bye if you like this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of those videos